I was watching this space thriller show called The Silent Sea on Netflix recently, and I was suddenly inspired to make some sort of space horror game. I was thinking of an atmospheric platformer, since I've never made a platformer before, despite being one of the most common game dev worries. I also had this idea to make it have one big graphics, since if you've watched any of my latest videos, you know I've been obsessed with the playdate, which only has black and white. I gave myself one week. Let's see how I did. I started off the first day by creating my project in Godot and immediately looking for any assets I could use to help me build out the levels. Of course, the asset master himself, Kenny, always got me with the hookup, so I was set for the platforms. Also, I found this other asset pack by Vector Pixel Star, which I would end up using later. I quickly set up a little platform area using Godot's tile map system and went to work on creating the character art. I didn't think I could find an animated one-bit astronaut online, so I just went ahead and made it myself in Ace. I wrote a basic character controller and hooked up all the animations and ended up with this. I made the camera follow the player, which is really simple in Godot with the camera 2D node. I made this oxygen bar on the side to show how much oxygen you had left, and that was it for the first day. On day two, I started off by messing around with the gravity values a bit to make it seem a little bit more floaty and space-like. I then leveraged the asset pack that I mentioned earlier to make these oxygen stations. I made it so if you walked up to it, you would snap to the station and start refilling your oxygen meter. My plan for the station was to be one giant map, so I drew out this big map border. I then started putting down platforms to make this first area of the game, and adding some decorations. I figured that I needed to change the opacity of the decorations so it was clear that they couldn't be interacted with, but that technically made it so the game isn't one bit anymore, since it's three colors now. But I realized I didn't care, and I could just do whatever I wanted. After the decorations were finished, I created this red vignette shader, and then used it when the player's oxygen levels were low. I said I didn't care earlier, but honestly I did want to try my best to keep with the one bit theme, but when I tried using a black vignette, it wasn't very visible. However, this was the last time I used the color other than black or white for the rest of the game. I created this computer object, and my idea for this was that you would have to activate a certain number of computers to win the game. I then created these smoke particles using Godot's particle system, and made a little animation that played when you activated them, like it was going into the ground. On day 3, I thought I probably wanted to make this more of a linear game, so I needed some sort of one-way door. So I put together this space gate that closes as you pass by it, which I accomplished by simply stretching out this little sprite. Then, I looked into a couple other horror games for inspiration, and quickly came to the realization that I would really need to build up the atmosphere using sound, since it was a 2D game. While with 3D games, you can lean a lot more on the visuals. I added the Sound Manager Godot plugin, and then I went on my usual route of scouring freesound.org and heavily altering them in Audacity to create a bunch of sound effects. Here's the walk, jump, door, oxygen station, and computer. I also added in some space ambiance. Honestly, sound effects are like 80% of the atmosphere of the game at this point. I then added in a little heads-up display that shows how many computers you've activated. On day 4, I started off by fixing the small issue where the walk sound wasn't fully synced with the animation. I fixed that using Godot's animation system, which is extremely powerful. I could simply run a function call whenever the step part of the animation is played. This was also the day that I thought about adding an enemy. I was inspired by the Metroids in the Metroid games, partially because it was space related, but mostly because I realized if I had some sort of floaty thing and I made it so that it can just go through walls, I wouldn't need to code any pathfinding AI. I started off with this placeholder circle and made it so it would move directly towards the player when the player was in range, but I forgot to disable the collision, so this happened. I then made it so when the enemies touched you, your rate of oxygen loss would increase. I exaggerated the effect here to make it more obvious. I then added in a wandering state so that enemies would wander around where they spawned. Originally, I was going to have it be a simple animated sprite, but as I kept looking at the circles, I started imagining what it would look like if they had some sort of wiggling tentacles coming out. So I decided I wanted to use procedural animation to give them wiggly arms. But while I was all excited, I came to a harrowing conclusion. I had absolutely no idea how to do procedural animation, and I sure wasn't going to try and learn it. So I came up with a nice hack and ended up essentially creating a stream of particles and angling them up and down and it made it look like tentacles. You can see the way I was going about it here and here was the final result. They look kind of like Junji Ito creatures, especially with the black and white, which I was pretty happy with. I felt they still needed a sprite so I made this eye as well as a blinking animation and now they were looking pretty creepy and I decided they were going to be some sort of space parasite. I wanted to give the player some agency to fight back so I made it so that when you connect to an oxygen station, the parasites that are chasing you would die. Maybe the reason is that the oxygen station outputs some sort of specific sound frequency or something. On day 5, I started off with making the sound effects for the parasites. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's 
kind of disgusting, but it really felt like they needed some sort of squelchy noise. I made it so you can start hearing the parasites when they're nearby, but while they're still off screen. So you get this nice effect where you can hear them before you can see them. Back to the level design side of things, I needed some way to make sure that player activates the computers in each section, or else they might be locked out and have no way to finish the mission. So I added in the ability for the computers to send a signal and unlock certain doors. I then needed a way to set an area to randomly spawn in parasites, since I didn't want to manually place them all down. So I made this parasite spawner component that starts spawning in parasites when you're inside of it. I can set a number of parasites to spawn, and if it hits that cap, it stops spawning. But if any parasites die, it starts spawning again until the cap is reached. I then made in three new areas areas that get progressively more difficult as you go through them. I wanted there to be a dialogue system because I imagined the story to be like you were sent there on a specific mission and headquarters can contact you in the beginning to brief you on the mission, as well as give a tutorial. So I went ahead and started drawing the sprite for your point of contact to HQ. I added in the Dialogic plugin, which I believe is the most popular Godot plugin, to add dialogue functionality and created this intro sequence. I made a main menu and decided to name this game Lunaris, or Lunaris, however you want to pronounce it, inspired by one of the characters in the show, The Silent I created a simple death animation and loose screen that plays when you run out of oxygen. I actually didn't need a whole week, just six days, because I only had a couple things to route out this day. I added in some checkpoints so that you don't have to start all over again when you die. Then I thought it would be awesome to have some sort of final chase sequence in the end, so let me just show you how that turned out. I adjusted the speed of the parasites in the end so you can just barely outrun them. If you want to play the game, you can play for free in the itch.io link in the description. If you want to see how I made a blacksmithing game or a virtual pet game in one week, then check out the videos on the screen. See you next time.